Good morning, crafty people, and welcome back to the Craft Dungeon. Dirty Paintbrush here. Um, this morning, I just wanted to take a little bit of time to, um, I'm kind of doing this video for a friend of mine, and she was making the comment that she basically didn't really know how to go about using watercolors, and I reminded her that I am no artist by any means, but that I'd be happy to make a quick video um, showing some techniques that I've used watercolor for, and then I was probably going to go ahead and link to some other videos uh, down in the description box of people that are way better than I am and how they use watercolors. But first, I kind of wanted to start out by showing what um, projects that I have that I've used watercolor on previously. Um, and I just realized that I forgot to pull an image because I kind of wanted to just show how you can quickly uh, just throw a little bit of color on an image, like a printed image or whatever the case may be. And just to add some color to it, so I'll pull something out of my scrap box here real quick that I can add some color to. Um, and this is hopefully just to kind of, to, you know, give her some inspiration and so that she can kind of start somewhere at least. Um, because I know sometimes that's, that's all I need is just to watch somebody else. And it doesn't necessarily mean that I am going to replicate or even be able to replicate what they've done, but I can use, the, you know, brains or funny things because you can watch something like that and then kind of, uh, obviously, kind of, then you can get ideas from it and use them in a, you know, whatever way that you see fit. Um, that might be a good thing right there because here's what I was looking for is that. I've had that for a long time, so and I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, so first, I just kind of wanted to go over real quick how I've used watercolor in the past. So I've used it for backgrounds on journal pages. Um... Like here, I've just added some border, you know, some colorful uh, border. I really actually like how this one turned out. And these are cheap watercolors. These are the $5, you know, at Michael's every day, $5 watercolors. So um, mostly I've used those in the past for things like this because, again, I'm not an artist. I don't paint portraits. You're not going to see any... Um, grassy, you know, <laughs> landscapes and happy little trees from me. So, well, I mean, you might see happy little trees, but they'll, they won't look like trees probably. I don't know. Um, I think this was watercolor. Uh, this was watercolor. Oh, I, I've used it a lot in this kind of a situation. That was not watercolor. This was alcohol marker. And I just liked it because it gave me color on the back of the page, too, because it soaks through. Um, that's watercolor to get that kind of a dripping effect. I'm not very good at it. Um, I've watched some other people that use it in their journals, and they probably have a little bit better paper because I know some of the people that I watch that do traveler's notebooks and things like that, they buy um, good paper. Uh, they buy good notebooks that have like the, I can't remember the name, the Tomoe River or whatever it is, paper, and I think it's thicker and better than this. So um, it does, you know, the paper gets pretty wet in here and doesn't really handle watercolor that well. I was trying to find my watercolor paper. This is watercolor. Um, this is the watercolor that's the, like the metallic kind of, uh, yeah, I don't know what you call it so much. So there's a little less color pigment and a lot of shine. So it shimmers and shines. And I'm happy that camera is actually picking that up pretty well. That's acrylic. Um, 
that's some watercolor. I basically just kind of went around the scrap paper that I had glued in with watercolor there. Uh, so there's uh, a lot of things that you can do just very simply. This is watercolor. That's watercolor. That turned out really pretty. Um, anyway, that's just to, you know, add some color to my journal pages. Uh, just so that they're not so plain and I can still easily write on them. Uh, I also forgot that I had a little book in here that I made out of watercolors. Uh, I did the background out of watercolors as well. And this is just a, I, all I did was I just took some cool cardstock that I liked. I made my cover out of it and I had so much of this old notebook paper um, again, it does not handle watercolor well like watercolor paper would. But the idea here, again, was to put color on the page. Um, so what I did here is I did watercolor on one side and then I flipped the page and pressed it against the other one and just kept moving on. And I did some watercolor there, pressed it down. Some of these turned out really pretty. I love this. Um, and I only painted one side of the page. I basically just saturated it with watercolor and then closed it <coughs> over so that it would press down onto this page. So that's kind of a quick way to get some color down. Um, it worked well. I mean, it didn't rip any of my pages. You have to be careful um, when you're working with, you know, real thin stock like this because this is just notebook paper and it could easily have all fallen apart um, with so much water on it. This one turned out really pretty. Uh, again, you know, it. you're not, I'm not making portraits, uh, you know. I am adding color to pages that I, I want to look at, you know. I think it's pretty to look at. It's, I love how the dark, you know, and the light kind of just, it just looks like water splotches kind of. Um, you know, you're playing with color, seeing what looks good together. Of course, this is one of my absolutely favorite color combinations where you go kind of from yellow to orange to pink, kind of like sunset, um, purples and blues and aquas together. Uh, I really like how this one turned out as well. Same concept, just paint one side and close the, close the book. It also picks up all the wrinkles in the paper. So like on this side, it looks really cool because it, you know, gathered uh, darker around the texture in the paper. And of course on this side, it just left it <laughs> white in those places. Um, that, you know, I feel like that could be oceany. So uh, that's what I had done with that. I didn't finish it yet. So um, again, I was just trying to kind of give my friend Nikki some ideas on what she could do. This is watercolor. What I actually did with this is I took an acrylic block and I put some watercolor down on it and then I pressed it to the paper. I just kind of wanted to see what that would do. So that's kind of the point of a, you know, if you have, if you want to have like a little sketchbook or a journal that you test things out in, that would be a good uh, you know a good thing to have because then you can test out stuff like that and see how it's gonna look so yeah that was my watercolor experiment in there I think that's the only thing I had in here that was watercolor uh, and none of this stuff that I've flipped through so far has had any gesso on it whatsoever so none of it's been primed. It's all been right on top of cheap, thin paper. So I don't think that any of the rest of this, this might be watercolor. I think this is watercolor on top of acrylic. Um, so it can definitely be utilized with other mediums. Yeah, I think that's mostly all I had in that book. Uh, I had, I used watercolor on this project quite a while ago. This was just to add some color around the outside of my cats. Um, so yeah, 
there's watercolor there obviously up here it turned into you know dark kind of muddy and that's all right it happens you know you learn uh that's not watercolor that's alcohol marker so yeah that's marker none of that is is watercolor but yeah so when i use it it's basically just to add add some color it's a quick way to add some color especially since uh it it's uh, one of the, you know, you could buy an inexpensive set and you've got a bunch of colors right there and you basically just need one, you know, brush. I would not recommend using the brushes that come with any of these sets because they're crap. But you can still, none of my brushes that I buy in packages or individually are expensive by any means. I, I find that I prefer, especially since I do, most of this I do is background coloring. I don't do a lot of precision water coloring, but I find that I like kind of the, the uh, round, and I'm not good with my brushes here. Let me pick out one that I like for watercolor. Okay, I love this for watercolor. Like if I'm just wanting to saturate the page, I'll use this puppy. She's my favorite for that. And I'm sure there's probably people out there that are like artists and they're laughing at me because it's not the right brush to use at all. And that's fine. I don't care. Something like that would probably be okay, I guess. This one's more flat, which that's fine. Um, I think this may have actually been a watercolor brush. I kind of feel when I start talking about watercolors that my idea of getting color transferred from the palette to the page is like you're sopping it up with like a rag. That was probably a watercolor brush, I'm guessing, that came with one of the crappy sets. Not crappy sets, it's a crappy brush. Oh, I would probably use that. I don't know. Uh, I should probably, if I'm going to do any of this, get some clean water because I've got crappy pink acrylic paint water. But not, not that that ever bothers me, does it? Uh, this is watercolor. I'd use this just to paint the, the background of this plain piece of paper that I put in my planner to use as a menu, uh, create, you know, to create a menu for the week. So I just wanted to add some color to it. So that, bam, it took me like a couple minutes to do that. Um, I had to find this because I, this was my old planner. These were my old planner inserts from a couple years ago I think so I knew that I had used some watercolor in these so that's kind of why I wanted to get them out and now I'm screwing them all up trying to flip through them here that's all right um this was actually watercolor too so I actually painted little hearts and stuff here uh, in watercolor it's those shimmery ones again uh, that's colored pencil. I had a couple of pages in here somewhere. Uh, I know that I used watercolor to create the background. And I don't, I guess I don't remember where they are. Obviously, because I'm still sitting here flipping through them. But somewhere in here, I had a whole weekly spread or a monthly spread or something I thought that was watercolor um, this paper actually handled it decently well oh my god what's going on on my phone it's just dinging 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 I bet that's miss I wonder if that's miss spanky answering me back I've been Talk, or making comments on her post this morning on Facebook about organizing her craft room. I love organizing my craft room and I told her, girl, you better be making videos because I'm weird and I want to watch that crap. I don't know why. I just like it. Uh, so I reorganized mine a little bit since the video that I posted. I actually, kind of like I was talking about that I wanted to do, I can't find what I'm looking for. I wasn't prepared. I should have had it pulled out and ready to go. You know, I'm going to keep repeating that statement over and over again because as much as I try to be prepared, <laughs> uh, 
I'm going to have to flip through stuff, but you know what? I'm not trying to be a pro YouTuber and make money off of it. I'm just trying to to uh, connect with people and make some new friends and have a good time. I so I don't need I, I don't need to worry about impressing. If you don't like it, don't watch. It's fine with me. I want to hang out with people who enjoy me. So that's what I'm doing. Uh, I believe that was watercolor. At least some of it was. This does not look like watercolor, but this is definitely watercolor. Uh, here is an example of a beautiful... Uh, one of my crafty friends in one of my groups did some watercolor ATCs. And ATCs are artist trading cards. And this is gorgeous. So this... I don't think that I could do this. I think if I practiced, I could do this because this is more portraity. But watercolor is is lends itself to being a little more abstract. So obviously we've got flowers and grass and sky and it's gorgeous. And I think that that's something that you could work toward doing just with a little bit of practice. Um, that ATC is just beautiful, and that's kind of why I wanted to pull that out and show it. This is the uh, happy mail that I've gotten from some of my crafty friends in my crafty groups and uh, I'm storing it in here until I actually get a book together the appropriate size to because I like to keep the envelopes too as you can see most of these envelopes are decorated and I want to keep all of that stuff and be able to, to pull it out so I need to make a book with pockets so that I can stick some of that stuff in We'll go back in the closet in a minute. See, and I have to organize while I'm organizing. Um, I was trying to find my watercolor paper. Oh, I bet it's over here. So what, <laughs> squirrel, what I was saying is that I rearranged my room again a little bit because uh, since the video that I posted, I had mentioned that I wanted to move my computer over back to the middle, the middle table, the oddball, the white table, the odd one out. And so, uh-oh, the question is, where is my blade? I hope I just threw it in this drawer over here because I was using this to work on my swap for my secret valentine, and I was making pockets and I needed my scoring blade there it is and it looks like I didn't put my cutting blade back on so anyway um, I did move my computer over to the center I finally got my uh, my boom stand for my camera so you're up there now I think that I've got it adjusted to how I want it I like this setup uh, I might, I need to get a USB extension cable because I kind of have a cord over here to my right just kind of hanging. <laughs> I don't really like that so much, but um, anyway, I kind of had to modify my setup a little bit to get my boom stand to work for me. Uh, anyway, so I think I'm good. I'm going to have a drink of coffee, excuse me. So I'm good for a while. I definitely want a cart. Uh, I think I'm going to do the Harbor Freight cart thing. I'm going to go get some fresh water real quick. Not that I'm ever picky about water, but I'm going to be picky right now. Okay, so, anyway, um, I'd still like some shelving, but I hung some of my artwork up that I had not had hung up previously that was just kind of sitting places, so I kind of got it up and out of the way, and I might have a little more to do, but stuff got moved around. I, I like organizing and reorganizing and... So here's what I've got. I've got what I showed you already. I've got the, and these have obviously been well used. <laughs> um, they're not bad watercolors really for people that are not, I'm not a professional. Uh, obviously we've went over this a million times. 
Um, I like to use the term mess maker, you know, of course that's like every, most of you know that I, that comes from Dawn. So that's kind of the, uh, the way I've communicated it to my friend Nikki as well. Just, you know, make a mess until it looks good. Uh, these are my Jane, this is one of my Jane Davenport, this is my only Jane Davenport set. I don't remember which one this was, but it's the one in the, it's bright. I can tell you that. <laughs> I can tell you that much. And then I have not unwrapped these cakes yet, but these are the Prima, and I think these are, these, these are pastel dreams. So these are all pastel colors. And I would love to use these, but I'm not going to sit here and unwrap these right now, so I'll have to do it later. When you get these, when you get them like this in the little tin, they're going to come individually wrapped. Um, you pop them out, you unwrap them, and you stick the cake back in. So I believe these are half pan size. They're not full. I'm pretty sure they're half pan size. But I, I, I have no idea. So I'm going to show just real quick the difference in how this works on a regular paper uh, versus watercolor paper, I guess. Watercolor paper, and I have super cheap watercolor paper. It's from Michaels. It is their Artist Loft brand, so it's not, it's not super thick. It's not super fancy. Um, I know that people that, you know, are really good at this stuff, they're like, oh, get the cold pressed, this, blah, blah, blah. I have no idea what any of that means. So anyway, what I like to do typically is start by spraying my watercolors down a little bit so I get them wet. And then, so I've got wet watercolors and wet brushes. So I'm gonna start with the small brush. And since I'm gonna soak this up real good i'm gonna go ahead and start with watercolor paper when it's all over my paintbrush there's crap stuck to it look it's dirty there's a big surprise right so i'm just gonna come in here and when i say like soak it up i soak it up i get a ton of color on there and i don't know the appropriate way i don't know that whether i'm supposed to do more of a this i don't really think it matters um for me because i'm not some art expert right so i get it nice and sloppy uh juicy comes to mind i think one of the ladies that i follow Lori marie she says juicy she likes them very juicy and i would agree with that um, I usually just kind of blot like that. I don't do strokes with watercolor. I don't know it, you know, I haven't studied a lot of technique because I don't use it like that. I use it like this. I want to add some color to something. Um, you can come back and you can add more water if you want to. That's the good thing about the watercolor paper. It takes the water. Sometimes if you add more water, um, and you, because you want to blend some colors together differently or better or whatever. Obviously, it's going to water down the watercolor, but there's reasons why you would want to do that, I guess. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know. Um, coming in here with another color. I, it seems like I tend to kind of always go for the same. I don't do a lot of mixing. I've done some mixing in here to kind of get an orangey color. That's what this is. So all I have to do is spray this and get it wet and basically it'll reconstitute again. So when you're mixing colors, you would do it um, like out, you know, you take a little bit of color from your pan and you'd pull it out here and then you'd come in here and now you have orange because I didn't have an orange in this set. Uh, this orange is looking a little more brownish rust like probably because I would need to add a little more yellow back to it maybe some yellow and some pink I don't know I don't know there's some yellow there now it's yellowy and if I go up here see now we have some green 
Yeah, I know, I stuck my finger in it. Blah. That's all right. So anyway, uh, I was just really quickly and unprofessionally showing you kind of how this can work. So you can take it and see when you do this, you can see how it spreads on the watercolor paper. And that's one of the things that you're not going to get on regular paper. So if you've got your water and you've got your color and you're coming in here, you're coming in here and you just dab it down, it's going to spread. That's what you want. It's really awesome because that's how you get your colors to blend. Um, I know I still say um a lot. I've got to learn to not do that or I'm going to have, but look at this. Look how cool this turned out right here. The yellow, I mean, it was terrible when I just had the orange on there that's not as orange as it should be anymore. Uh, it didn't look near as good, but I went back in there with some yellow and went up through the blue. So now I have a different shade of blue than was there originally and some green and then there's the blue mixing with the pink starting to look purple this is what i like about the watercolor um so yeah you can blot some excess off if you need to you can blot it and then give it that little bit of i would call it a distressed look yeah so I'm going to go ahead and just wipe that off. I'm just getting crap everywhere. That's fine. That's all right. I'm getting crap everywhere. Put that up there and get it out of my way here. So, uh, this is regular paper. So, when I try to color in an image, I don't try to be perfect and stay inside the lines. I'm gonna we're gonna have an orange cat and this what happens here you might be noticing it does not spread it actually kind of stays in a little uh, bubble I guess it sits on top of the paper is probably what I'm trying to say and so you have to work it around a little bit more and I'm just barely dabbing and so like the ears they're not gonna be perfect uh, I was going to kind of show you my take on, and see, I can go back over here and do some pink after this dries in the ears, but I'm just going to kind of show you my take on coloring an image, and I'll be honest, I like literally have done this not often at all, so, um, we're just, we're just messing around. Let's see, here's more kitty. She's got a bow on. So you just try to kind of, it, it. It spreads a tiny bit, but mostly when you see when I lift the brush away, uh, it just kind of does its own thing. It's very different than the the way that it's that it works with the watercolor paper, and that's okay. We're not. I am not doing this to be fancy at all, so I don't mind. Uh, but this is kind of how you would get the look of, you know, the the lighter in some places and the darker in other places. So I was just going to come in here and put a splotch in the middle of her ears, seeing it got on her face. <laughs> Real good there. And this is why I'm not a pro, but I fixed it for the most part. And see, I got way too much on this ear over here and it's just kind of bubbling up and sitting there it's not really staying where i want it to or going where i want it to and that's that's okay i've probably got way too much paint on the brush but you get the idea you'll get the idea so this is not going to be super uh exact I'm going to go back over here and try to cover up some of that pink. There we go. I'm going to see. I could have done pink on the nose and I forgot. I forgot. I'm terrible at coloring. I'm terrible at a lot of things. I don't practice enough. I try something once. Now see, it went way over there. Now, I, probably for this, it would work better, but I cleaned it up. It would probably work a little better if I had a smaller brush for stuff like that. And I've got some smaller brushes. 
that one might work a little better for stuff that small because then it wouldn't be falling all over the place. Um, but that's okay. So, I don't know if those are socks or part of my problem with coloring stuff is I look at some of this and I say, I don't have any idea if that's supposed to be part of her pants or part of her socks or what. But I've got some skin color here. So I'm going to get this pink off of here. And then maybe add some of this to it and see if I can make it more pinky peachy. And this is where I'd go through here and just paint her face again. I don't use strokes when I do this. I do the splotchy. I don't know, dabby? I'm dabbing. I do dabbies. Uh, I don't know if it's the right way, the wrong way, and I don't care. I don't, I'm not doing this to do the right way or the wrong way. I'm just showing you what I do. So this is her little face, and I obviously need some more color here because I just don't, I'm not having enough. Um, part of the issue here, again, it's like I said, it just kind of sits on top of the paper. You're not getting any good spread like we did on the watercolor paper. If I had an image on the watercolor paper, it would spread nicely. The good thing is I can pull some of that color from over there. And this is not going to look like an image that you've colored with pens or markers. Um, because you're, you're using the watercolor, so you're going to have the watercolor effect, right? So, you know, you have to, I guess, like that, like the, the effect that it gives. Um, so I'm going to go in here, and actually I may just go ahead and blot some of that off, because there's so much sitting there on top. So that's the only thing, on top of that, you want to keep in mind that you will not be able to just continue to, I mean, this paper is going to break down a lot easier. This is very wet. So it just doesn't do near as good of a job either holding the color or holding the, taking the water. Um, now see it's spreading there a little bit and I think that's because there's already some water on there So that's why it's spreading more So those are her cheeks and her cheeks are all over the place obviously um, I guess I could do her hair brown I think that's brown <laughs> Yeah, it's a reddish brown And I guess I am I guess I was doing strokes there. I normally don't do strokes. Oops. And I went outside the line. Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I think too with watercolor, I, I kind of have the impression that you don't worry as much because a lot of times it's going to spread and it's going to go outside the line. And again, that's part of the look of watercolor. Um, there are definitely some techniques where you layer colors while they're still wet or you wait until they're dry and then you layer them uh, again i've not practiced doing a lot of that and if i was good at this you know i would do some intentional highlighting i am not good at this so it's going to end up where it ends up we're going to have darker colors where we have darker colors and we're going to have lighter you can go back over it and darken it up in places. Just like that. I feel like this ponytail probably needs to be a little bit darker here. Just to kind of match the other one. All right, there we go. Yeah, there's her hair. We're gonna do, We'll do some little yellow hair ties. So I'll spray these down because I didn't get those wet before. We'll do something like that. Dab, dab, dab. Dab, dab, dab. Um, yeah. And how, see I must have my brush too far off to the side. Like 
this instead of like that. So it's like dripping color. <laughs> it's dripping color where it's not supposed to drip color. So it's pretty easy to fix because I just dabbed most of that right up. So no big deal, right? I don't know. I mean, I could sit here and do this all day long, but I think you get the idea and I don't really know that anybody wants to watch me attempt to color that, but I would like to show that again because it's drying and I just think it looks pretty. I mean, I don't know. I will probably, I mean, I, this is a scrap piece that I'll just end up using in a project at some point. I don't know exactly what, but I don't have to know yet. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty wet sticking down to my workspace here. Looks like her dress has some stripes. Just go in here and kind of do some of that. Yeah, that was way too much color probably. A little bit. See, I do it again. Here, let's do straighter up and see if I can keep that from making the cat purple. Although purple cat would be quite interesting. So we got some stripes and we, you know, we have bleed outside of the lines, but um, I, that's the idea, I think. I like it, I, it doesn't bother me. I think it's, I think that's kind of the, the idea behind the watercolors is to, it's not all always all uniform. If there, there's a specific style so we're not looking at sharp lines here <laughs> by any means. Uh, I have no idea. I guess I'll make her shoes brown. That's boring. I know, brown shoes, come on. Maybe I should have made them black. And I'm guessing that those are her little sockies. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this all the same here. Okay, and then um, I did not finish. These are legs, like skin, and it's gonna, if I would have waited till that pink was more dry, I wouldn't have got all that bleed over from the pink. So I'm gonna try to pick some of that up and get it off there, and then I will wait for it to dry probably a little bit more but the great thing at least about these watercolors is I if you get there right away you can pick pick it right up and uh, it takes most of it just right off the paper so I can go back in here again there we go and cover up most of that pink that I drug down obviously it her pink cheeks make it look like she's got scarlet fever or something. <laughs> so then when you do something like this, if you want to, you can go back in and you can obviously do pin work to, um, that's her arm too. Gosh, I did real bad at that. This is why I'm not good at coloring here. I miss things and then I have to go back. And see, I should have used a little bit smaller brush for that, that's fine. I'm trying to get the color mostly where it goes, and I miss the cat's paws, too. <laughs> uh, the cat has no paws. What did I use for the cat? This I did. So we'll just go in here. We'll fix the cat's paws. There we go. They have color now. We're good. I guess her socks can be white, and then I need to do the cat's bow. So I would be smart. Most of the cat is probably relatively dry, except for the paws. So I'm gonna do the bow. I mean, normally you would do a green, a pink bow, right? Probably a girl kitty. For some reason, I kind of felt like I didn't want pink, but I'm gonna do pink anyway. So. We're just gently dabbing some color in. If it spreads a little bit, that's fine. Uh, we're not going for perfection here at all. Now the bow is pink. So there you go, there's the little girl. So I'm just gonna leave her socks white because that's how I roll. 
you could go back in later uh, a lot of times when you have something that's white uh, good artists will go back with some blue like a blue marker and kind of do a blue outline around the white it's supposed to provide some kind of effect like I don't know I don't know it makes it look better I know that when you have white if you kind of uh, like with Santa, I learned this year that when I stamped Santas and painted them, that what I would do is I would go back and uh, wear it like for the white beard, instead of just leaving it white and doing nothing else, the correct thing to do is go back with like a sky blue colored marker, like I work with alcohol markers because that's what I've got, uh, you would go around with a light blue and kind of outline the end you'd outline right on the inside of the border and I don't know what the artistic term is of what it's supposed to accomplish I'm guessing it's some kind of a dimensional thing or maybe it just makes it look more finished but clearly I'm not the one to be asking those questions but that's the little girl so we have a couple of uh, I've showed shown a couple of things you can do with them I didn't mean to close this yet because it's all wet the other thing I was going to tell you as well, and I don't know how accurate it is, or I know I heard it somewhere and I can't remember where, but when I've worked with my watercolors, I leave them open for a little while after I'm done so the cakes dry out, um, especially if you've mixed color because you're going to go to close this and you wouldn't want it dripped back in there. So when you're mixing palette, especially, um, here I use the little, the these are like little uh, cupped, holes they're not holes you know what I'm saying anyway you can mix your colors here but if you would close it when they're all wet then it would drip back into your other non-mixed colors I also feel like if they have the opportunity to even if you don't mix colors I feel like that if you would leave them soaking wet and close them that maybe that would give an opportunity for a mold or something to start growing so I let them dry out before I close them that's the point that I was trying to get to so Nikki, I hope this video helped you uh, kind of have an idea of, of what you can do with watercolor. Like I said, you can start with a very inexpensive set. I think they work beautifully other than the yellow. That, I just stuck my finger right in that. I'm sorry. Other than the, oh, that was already there. The yellow came from this set, but every other color came out of this set. I still think it looks pretty. It will be a little bit lighter when it's dry but no big deal don't be afraid to just slop the color on your brush i like the word slop um, make it nice and juicy you can add always add more water to kind of blend things out more water is your base so water is what you're going to use to make it move to make it blend to make it do what you want to do uh, so that's how it's a little bit different than like acrylic paint where you wouldn't normally add water to it normally we're not going to get into that right now um like jane davenport's watercolor paints are about 30 35 dollars for a set like this i think the primo ones i'm not sure how much these are there is a huge number of different colored sets of these i think i've seen at least 12 different color sets i'd like to collect them all even though i'm not you know a watercolor artist i love them i love the little tins I love the vibrant colors. There's definitely more pigment. Oh my gosh, this is bent. Didn't it come like that? I got this for Christmas and I didn't even notice that yet. Or did I bend it? <laughs> did I do something to bend it? Which that wouldn't be surprising at all. I could have stacked it on top of something that... Or stacked something on top of it that kind of did that. Anyway, so that is what I wanted to go over today. So... I hope this is helpful and to anybody else that enjoyed my rambling or my quick little non-artistic demonstration of watercolors. Thank you for hanging out with me and uh, straight from the craft dungeon. Hope everybody has a great weekend. We'll talk to you later. Bye.